to fulfill your destiny. And that's why God was telling Joshua in Joshua 1 to say, you know what? Be strong and courageous. Hallelujah. He says, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. In short, he said that the same presence that was with Moses is the same presence that shall carry you through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it is the presence of God that was with Moses. Because at one time, when God wanted to withdraw his presence, Moses went to God and said, God, we need your presence. If your presence does not go with us, we are not moving from here. Hallelujah. Because how will people know that you, you, that, that, that you are our God? So the presence of God makes a difference between you and the outside world. The presence of God makes a difference between you and the nun. That's why it says, no, 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 we need your presence. Hallelujah. Because without your presence, we cannot achieve anything. Without your presence, we cannot go anywhere. So whose strength are you walking in? Hallelujah. Is it your own? Whose authority are you walking in? Hallelujah. Amen. The other thing that we see, the fourth thing that we see in verse 34, as he said that, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. We're looking at what can, how we can be committed to our purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 17. Can you just put that up for us, Shekanda? Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 17. Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 17. Hallelujah. How can we be committed to our purpose? He says here that Father forgive them for they know not about what they do. In short, what he's saying is that ignore, I just want to tell someone today that ignorance of sin is still a sin. Amen? Amen. Ignorance of sin is still a sin. Amen. Amen. So if you are unsure, there are sins that are known and sins that are not known. Mm. So if you are unsure, I want you to open up your heart to the Lord and ask the Lord, invite him into your heart today. Mm. Amen. Amen. He's able to forgive all our sins according to Colossians chapter 2 verse 13. Even those things that are known and those things that are unknown. And that's why the psalmist says that your word I hide in my heart mm. so that I may not sin against you. Hallelujah. He has promised, amen, to forgive us even from the sins that we do not know. Hallelujah. Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 17. Hallelujah. Leviticus 5, 17. The Bible says, If a person sins and commits any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of the Lord, mm. though he doesn't know it, yet he is guilty and shall bear his iniquity. Amen. Amen. So he's saying that uh, even though you know it, but you are sinning, he says you are still guilty of sin. So if every person sees and does anything which the Lord has commanded not to be done, even though you are unaware, you are still guilty of sin. And so many people, they have this saying that they say that what you do not know cannot kill you. What you do not know will kill you. And that's why we should not walk in ignorance. Ignorance of sin is still a sin. And to understand tells us that uh, lack of knowledge, that lack of knowledge, we should not lack knowledge. Mm. So we should have knowledge of sin. But God here says that He's able to forgive us even from the sins that we do not know. Mm. That's why I say that as we pray today, let us open up our hearts to the Lord as we want to fulfill our purpose and ask God to forgive us from our sins, whether known or unknown. Because at the end of the day, ignorance of sin is still a sin. So whether you know it or not, you might say, oh no, because I never knew. No, 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 no. The Bible says that uh, the times of ignorance, God now has overlooked it. 
Amen. God has overlooked the times of ignorance. We cannot afford to be ignorant in the things of God, especially where sin is concerned. Hallelujah. Amen. And then in verse 5, or the, the fifth thing, we see here in Luke, in Luke chapter 6, verse 27 to 28. You can put that up, Shekinah. So we're looking at how we can be committed up to the end. The lessons that we can draw from Jesus Christ that shall help us to be committed up to the end. The first one that we saw is that we need to be prayerful. Amen. Amen. In our darkest moments, let us learn to be prayerful as we go through life. If we are going to fulfill our purpose. The second thing that we see is that we need to be able to stand in the gap for others. Amen. Hallelujah. The other thing that we saw is that Jesus became weak in order for us to be strong. We need to assess and look at which strength are we walking in. Are we walking in the strength of the Lord or are we walking in our own strength? Because the Bible says that be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. So we need to walk in the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the fourth thing that we saw is that we need to get rid of sin in our lives. Amen. Because Amen. sin will cause us not to reach our destination. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we need to be mindful of what is sinful and what is not. Every known and unknown sin. We need to pray that God may you bring it to light. That God shall expose it so we shall know what is hindering us from moving forward. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So the fifth thing, Luke chapter 6, 27 to 28. Luke chapter 6, verse 27 to 28. The Bible says, But I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them that use you. Amen. Amen. So the fifth thing is if you are going to if you are going to be committed up to you, if you are going to be committed to your purpose, just ask your neighbor, just ask your neighbor one thing to say, do you practice what you preach? Christ practiced what he preached. Amen. Amen. He loved his enemies. He did good to those. He blessed them. He blessed he says, bless them that curse you. Amen. Pray for them that despise you. Pray for them that are causing you harm. So I want to ask you today, are you preach, are you practicing what you preach? Because we say one thing and we do another. Amen. We live lives that are double. We're double-minded. The Bible says that a person who is double-minded is unstable in all his ways. Are we stable in all our ways? <coughs> are we only Christians on Sunday? Are we only Christians when we're in the presence of Christians? But when we are elsewhere, we do other things. Do you practice what you preach? And that's why Joshua was being told, he said, don't let this book of law depart from you. He said, meditate upon it in Joshua 1, should be verse 9. He says, meditate upon it day and night, so that, you shall, so that your ways shall be prosperous, and you shall be successful. Are you practicing what you are preaching? Jesus was practicing what he was preaching and that's why he managed to get to the end and to get to the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The verse 6, the, the 6 in thing, sorry, in Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. You can put that up for us, Shekinah. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 14. So we're looking at things that can help us to be committed to our purpose even up to the end. That we shall be able to fulfill our destiny. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 14. 
Colossians 1.14. Yes. Colossians chapter number 1 and verse 14. The Bible says, In whom we have redemption through his blood mm-hmm. and the forgiveness of sins. Amen. 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 So we have forgiveness of sin through Christ. We have forgiveness through Christ. And my answer, for my question for you today is that have you received forgiveness for your sins? Hallelujah. Because you cannot fulfill your purpose if you are in, if you are walking and living in sin. Our lives need to be blameless even before God. Jesus' life was blameless. The Bible says that without holiness, nobody will see God. So we need to be righteous in all we do. How pure are our hearts? Because if our hearts are not pure, then we cannot be pure towards God. We cannot fulfill what God says. Because we shall walk in disobedience. We shall walk in unforgiveness. Hallelujah. Even as we are seeing these things, we shall walk in pride. Amen. We shall walk in greed. We shall be people who shall want to bring people down. Have you received forgiveness for your sins? Hallelujah. The Bible says that he's, if, we, if we confess with our mouth, amen, and believe in our hearts, he's able to forgive us. He's a just God who's able to forgive. Mm. And maybe we have sweared away from our purpose. He's still here to forgive. Mm. He has the power to forgive sin. And we see that as Jesus Christ went and he healed people, he always told them that your sins are forgiven because sin is a hindrance to the purposes of God. It will hinder you. And we saw so many people in the Bible, they were hindered because of the sin that they harbored in their life. And to make matters worse, we tend to cover up our sin. But I want to tell somebody today that God and is ready to forgive. Amen. He's the God who is slow to anger. He's the God who is ready to forgive. He's the God who is able to give us a clean slate. Mm. Because he tells us that if you are in Christ, the Bible says, then you are a new creation. He says, behold, the old has gone and the new has come. Have you been forgiven of your sins? He was saying, he says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Amen. So we're going to pray to God today that God forgive me in every way that I've sinned. He, that he forgives you for all your shortcomings. Hallelujah. Because we have all sinned. Amen. That says we have all sinned. It's only by grace. Amen. By the grace and the mercies of God that they were It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, Hallelujah. even the forgiveness of sin. So if we are going to be committed to the end, we need our sins to be forgiven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we can walk perfectly before God. So we can walk blamelessly before God. Hallelujah. Amen. So God can see our his righteousness within us even as we were going to be able to say, this, this servant of mine, he is righteous. Mm, hallelujah. So we can find grace and favor in the sight of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then the last thing that we see, then the last thing that we can learn, amen. Amen. When we are committed to our purpose even unto the end, like I said, that every purpose there is a destiny. When we read the book of John chapter 3 and verse 16, which is a very common verse, John 3, 16. Shekana, can you put it up? John 3 and verse 16. John 3 verse 16. We read when we started in the book of Hebrews that because Jesus Christ humbled himself up to the cross, God gave him a name that was above every other name. Amen. Therefore, God exalted him because he did 
what? He fulfilled his purpose. Committed up to the end and fulfilling his destiny. John 3.16, the Bible says that, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. And we see this eternal life being demonstrated on the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. So we see victory through the redeeming love of God. So if we are going to be committed unto him up to the end, we shall see victory in our lives. Amen. Have you accepted that you are victorious? Because sometimes we don't even see victory in our lives. We walk around like people who are defeated. There's so many Christians who look so defeated. Like they've never seen the hand of God. Or they've never heard of the, of the, of the move of God. Or they've never experienced the touch of God. They've never experienced a miracle from God. Hallelujah. Because we don't see victory in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Like I said, Romans 8, this is 7 to 10. It says, Nay, you know these things. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have we seen the victory? When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he conquered everything. Amen. The Bible Colossians 2 40 says that he took everything and he nailed it to the cross. He triumphed over everything. Hallelujah. Every principality. Mm. He nailed it to the cross. And we saw victory. Amen. Have you seen victory in your life? Hallelujah. Victory demonstrated by the Lord Jesus Christ dying on the cross. And that's why he said, you know what? It is finished. Amen. Amen. And that this victory, it shall be demonstrated in our lives. And at the end of it all, when we fulfill our purpose, when we reach our destiny, we shall see our lives victorious. That's why we need to live lives that are victorious as Christians. Amen. Amen. Lives that are victorious. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. You can put that up for me, Shekinah. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. And we'll read from verse 5 to 8. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. The Bible says, Philippians 2, verse 5 to 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men, mm. and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, because became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Amen. Amen. So we see here talk about Jesus Christ. Mm. Like I was saying that, how committed are you? Mm. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ did not neglect his purpose. Because he knew his destiny was, was at the cross. And we see here in Philippians, it says that, uh, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Then he goes on to say that he was in the same form, he was God himself. But he didn't find a robber to be equal with God. But he humbled himself, the Bible says. He humbled himself of no reputation. And he took the form of a servant. Amen. Hallelujah. He took the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And, and then verse 8 says that, And being found in the fashion as man, he humbled himself, he became obedient unto death. What death? The death of the, of the cross. Amen. Obedient even unto the destiny. Obedient within the purpose. Amen. Amen. That he was walking with, even unto the cross. How committed are you, amen, amen. to your purpose? 
I said in the beginning that every purpose there is a destiny. When you know your purpose, it will allow you to be focused to your destiny. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Even up to the cross, he was obedient. He knew what he was meant to do and not meant to do. He knew the path he was going to walk and not and where not to go. Why? Because he was committed to his assignment. Amen. Are you committed to your assignment? Second Corinthians 5 21 says, God made him who had no sin to be seen for us. Hallelujah. So that in him we can become the righteousness of God. What is God? What, has, what is God making you into? Hallelujah. So that you, you can become the righteousness of Him. Are you committed to your purpose? Hallelujah. Can you go back to that version of Hebrews chapter twelve, verse two? We just rise up to our feet. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you committed to your purpose? Jesus Christ did not neglect his purpose. He was committed to his purpose up to the end. Mm. You have a purpose. Hallelujah. Therefore, you have a destiny. Amen. Amen. What is your commitment? If you don't know your purpose, I want everybody to stand, even the children. Can you please stand? Hallelujah. Because knowing your purpose will allow you to focus on your destiny. It was a preferred version. Hallelujah. Amen. And we were singing when we started that I surrender all to you, mm. withholding nothing. Hallelujah. When when we, when the praise team was singing, are you committed to your purpose? Hallelujah. So he was, he says that looking away mm. from all destruction Hallelujah. to Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I just want us to pray right now that Father God help me to look away from all distractions. We saw the destructions that Jesus went through <clears throat> in the utterances that he made <clears throat> upon the cross. But we saw him go through them. I want us, I want you to take even either a minute or two minutes and you are going to pray that God help me, help me Jehovah God, that I shall look away from all distractions, but I shall look to Jesus. Let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to come before you today. Hallelujah. Father, we are praying right now. We give you praise. Help us to look away from every distraction. Every hitter as Jehovah God. That is taking us away from your purpose. In Jesus name. From the purpose that you have for our life today. Give you the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus. You, glory. you know the distractions that have been distracting you. Begin to pray right now. Begin to pray right now. Whatever distraction is in your heart. That is taking you away from assignment and the purpose of God. We are praying today that out, out of our way, out of our way, out of our way, we shall not be distracted for anything. But we are looking unto Jesus. We are looking unto Jesus that we shall fulfill our purpose. We are looking unto Jesus that we shall go to our destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, he who is our leader and our